hope you can see the schedule right about on time. Um, we're making good progress. A lot of good, lot of good attendance. Excellent instruction. I, I couldn't be happier. And now we got a very fun person next. But let me walk you through the, the safety stuff again. So don't do anything you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> be careful with yourself. Uh, and then don't hurt yourself or anybody else. That's not what we're after here. Um, be careful. Um, don't use this for the power of evil, especially everything that Tom shows you. And then lastly, you know the drill now. Mute. Stay on mute, which is great. Pin the instructor. So you're looking for T-S. Tom, say see to death. Um, ask questions in chat. I'll carry them forward for you. Or when there's a quiet piece, just come on, come off mute and, and answer your, ask your questions. And then lastly, turn on closed captions so you can see the magical words. All right. So Tom's uh, got a lot of background as well. Um, I remember he was my dummy when I first started playing with people out here since I was in uh, hermit mode for a while. Great guy. Um, just a great human being. Um, and, it, and we took him a while to start getting to share with people. And uh, I couldn't be happier that he's out there doing that and he's teaching locally as well. He'll tell you all about that at the end, hopefully. Good to see you guys. So I joined on a little bit later. Uh, I got to catch the, the last half of Rowell's session. So I've been on ever since. I'm, I'm really very humbled to, to be teaching with everybody else. Um, it's, it's kind of funny because a lot of times when I go with my teachers and they're teaching at a seminar, they're like, it's like 30 minutes before a seminar and they're like, what do you want to learn? <laughs> because they, they have so much material, they, they can really teach anything on the spot. But it's like, you know, we don't, we don't know what the audience wants to hear. So sometimes it's like they were going to teach something, but then the person before them teaches what they were going to teach. So they're like, no, they'll add on to that. Um, so we'll do our best to play with, with different concepts. I'm going to take us through just to give you a little bit about my background. So I have a background in uh, Kumbhatan under GM Shelley. Uh, my, my teacher is Guru June, so Kapitiran Mendarigma, and then uh, GM Bobby and Blintz Walk, and then a little bit of uh, KI under Guru June, uh, which is under Coach, Coach Arnold. So, and just to give a shout out to uh, Guru John Bailey, I started with him at the beginning and uh, without him, I, I wouldn't know any of you guys. So, so shout out to him in New York. Um, and he was introduced to me by Datu Tim. So what we'll start off here is a little bit of a tribute to uh, Kombatan. So if you wanna follow along, I highly suggest it. If you just wanna watch, that's fine. We're gonna do some classical striking you won't be able to see my whole body. There's there's not not any footwork that I'm gonna show. It's just upper body movement. So I'm gonna change this camera angle here. So can everybody see me in frame? Upper body at least? Yes, perfect. Awesome, okay. So I'm going to go through some of the terminology as we go through it, but it's basically downward patterns, flat strikes, some abanicos thrown in, in there towards the end. Okay, so I'm going to do this as a little bit of a warm up for people who want to interact and, and for those who want to get the blood moving. Okay, so right now my right leg is in front. I have my stick in my right hand. You can do this left handed. If you do this left-handed, I recommend you switch to left lead. You don't have to, but I highly recommend it so you're not, you're not limited on motion. So ready. So we're gonna start in a, in a chamber position. So I'm in chamber of comatone right now. So, so it's nice and high on the back, as opposed to lint walk chamber, where my elbows gonna be a little bit downward, right? So I'm in chamber like this. First motion is ocho ocho down, two movements. So one count, two movements. We'll go through just that for right now. Ready? This goes ocho, ocho down. One, two, three, four, five. The next movement is going to be ocho, ocho up. So it's just a, it's just an X that you're making in the air. So ocho, ocho up. One, two. Three, four, five. If you notice, I'm not turning my body too much right now. 
just because I want to stay in frame and make sure everybody can see my lines. When you're going slow, when you're going slow with this, I want to make sure that my lines are nice and straight. So if I'm going diagonal down, I don't want any, any interruptions on my arm or on the stick. So I want to keep that as straight as possible. Same thing when I'm going flat strikes, I want to keep it as flat as possible. I don't want any smiley faces or any frowning or any frowning in, in my um, in my line. So it's it's a lot easier when you have a blade in your hand because you can use blade awareness. But when you have a stick, sometimes I see people kind of uh, kind of moving their wrist in a in an unnatural format. So also when you play with a blade, it also makes what I've learned is that. When I transitioned from training with just stick to blade, my strikes got a lot more precise. And then also from the feedback of the people that I would spar with, your strikes get a lot more uh, depth to them. They're not as uh, they're not as explosive at a, on a wider scale, but they're a lot more penetrating. So it's something to consider if you're, if you're sparring or if you're just trying to develop power in a very um, precise manner. So next movement is gonna be Bandi and banda. So just to recap, we did ocho ocho down, ocho ocho up, and now we're doing bandi and banda, which is two flat strikes. So one, two, three, four, five. So, so far we've done ocho ocho down, ocho ocho up, bandi and banda, Next movement is going to be rompida. So if you have a blade in your hand or a trainer in your hand, it's easier to see this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the middle of the body and then I'm going to turn my wrist and then cut back up. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. Again, stay true to your line. Stay true to, to your line so you don't want to be going here and then kind of squirrel them back up, right? So it's nice and straight, nice and efficient. Next movement is going to be abanico horizontal, right? So we call this abanico horizontal, so we differentiate it from abanicos that are vertical. So when we go abanico horizontal, it's the it's the normal one that people are used to. It's the fanning, right? So slight footwork in here. I'm not going to do the footwork, but I'll show it to you as a demo. I step up, and my back foot slides back and, and taps my calf. I chamber back on my serrated side on my closed position, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, and close. So also from here, we're gonna do abanico largo. So we'll combine it with abanico corto. Abanico largo is you're reaching far and you're trying to hit the back piece of the person's head. So if, they're, if your opponent is facing you, you, want, you don't wanna hit them in the forehead, you wanna touch them on the back of the head. So you wanna roll that wrist so that you can flick that top, that top of the tip of your stick on the back, right? So abanico corto is straight down to the ground, right? So it's gonna be a little harder to see. Are we largo, corto, largo, corto. So we're going far for largo, we're going short for corto. So one count, two movements, ready? One, two, three, four, five. So we end up at the bottom position and then we take that into the three sunkites, right? So sunkite is gonna come from the ground, up through the throat, one, two, three. So it's an uppercut and then a hook and then a hook if you're thinking about empty hands. So it's an uppercut, hook, hook. So we got three motions, one count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. So just a note for now, certain people do it differently. The way I do it is I like to keep a 90 degree angle of my stick and my forearm. It's actually not exactly 90, but it's a little canted. I remember in, in Thai, one of your videos, you're talking about naturally, you don't, you have to force that 90. So it's, it's actually a little bit off of 90. So do what's comfortable, but what I don't, 
I don't do is I don't flip flip up the stick for the for the thrust. You can do that. It's a preference. I just I just feel that my motion is a lot more efficient if I keep this pretty firm as I'm going through my motions here. Next movement, doblete. So we finished one, two, three. Doblete is gonna be chambered on the right. It's double zero. In other arts, it's double down in blitz walk. So it goes doblete, and then bring it back. One, two, three, four, five. Next movement is doblada, double zero. So we did a double zero on a diagonal plane. So we went down on this line. That was doblete. Now we're gonna do doblada. When I do doblada, I think of, um, I can't think of what it's called now. It's just a big circle. It's like a carrot, it's like a, it's like a, a big wheel, like the London eye. You're just doing it right on your side. Notice when I do this, I don't want to drop this on my side here. My opponent is facing me. So when I imagine, when I imagine my opponent, it's, it's in directly in front of me. So I want to make sure this is coming straight on to my opponent and it's not out to the side here. Okay. So it's two motion movements, right? So it goes one, two, three, four, five. Last movement. It's called the we sick or the we tick. I've heard it both ways. So um, after the end of combinations for the great grandmaster Ernesto, he would like to finish off with that, right? So the footwork, again, I'm not gonna do the footwork. I'm just gonna show it as a demo. Is the same as my abanico horizontal. I'm gonna step up and then my back foot is gonna slide and tap my thigh, my, my calf, okay? So that provides momentum in my jab as I snap it out and bring it back. So ready? One. Target is the bridge of the nose. Two, three, four, five, and back. All right, let me see what the feedback is so far. Make sure everyone can see me and can hear me. Cool, 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 no questions. That's good. All right, so I did a homage to Kombatan for the first half. Now we're getting to the second half of my session. I'm going to go into Balintawak, all right? So we're shifting gears. Major things about Kombatan Balintawak differences. Uh, Kombatan, when I chamber, the tip of my stick is down when I chamber. In Balintawak, the tip of my stick is not going to be down. It's going to be it's going to be pointed up most of the time. Okay, so the chambers are different, and also in Balin's walk, I'm going to be thinking more corto, more medio, so not so much largo. Now, doesn't mean that Comatan doesn't have that. It's just different focuses for different perspectives for for right now, right? So I know there's a lot of. Um, I remember I remember one time I was starting to do Balin's walk, and I went to. Um, I was asked by a Comptown player, who was like, you know, how do you guys enter? You know, the big question is like, you guys play Corto a lot. How do you guys enter? Because a lot of people like to say, you know, that's cool. You guys, you guys focus on that little thing, but how do you guys get there? And, you know, at the time, my understanding was, was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty low, just like it is now, maybe, maybe a little bit better. But a lot of us, you know, like, we're bulldogs, man. I mean, no matter our, what art we come from, but Blintz Walk especially, like we're bulldogs. And we'll take a couple hits to get inside to get to get to that space where where you, you're ours. Okay. So to Blintz Walk, we're gonna start with see how much time we got. 15 minutes. There's a uh, there's a a way that we warm up in Blintz Walk that was introduced to me by Guru Jun. Whenever you go into a seminar, you always go into to, to gain new perspectives and you're working with new people, right? It's not, it's not as fun to work with the people that you're working with every day because that's not the point. You're, you're going to interface with, with people from different perspectives and different energies, with different energies, which makes you a better player, makes you a better, uh, better at rhythm and space as well. So 
but you want to be safe at the same time. One of our number one priorities, if not the first, is safety. So I'm, I go in and I meet you. It's the first time we've met. We check if we have any injuries. But I don't know what kind of intensity you're going to come at me with. So in Balint Walk specifically, we have Agak, right? So we have feeder and receiver, just like all the other arts have as well. But how do I make sure that when you return, you're not going to punch me in the face? Um, we like to say, if you got hit, it's your fault. It's not the person who hit you, it's your fault. So, so I don't want to get in the position to get hit. So what I do is if I'm feeding, we'll do five strikes. Okay, we'll review five strikes for balloons walk. So for people who are not balloons walk players, just follow along with the strikes. Don't get too caught up in exactly how I do it. It's a forehand, it's a backhand, and it's a thrust. It's a forehand, it's a backhand, it's a thrust. No more, no less. So let me get back in frame here. So what I'll do is, I'll say, so I'm in semi-advanced fighting position right now. So Guru Alex had, uh, had shown this earlier. So we'll start down here. And to get to that position, I'll draw back like a bow and arrow, as Jim Bobby likes to say. So from here, I'll feed a one. So I can feed it like this, or I can feed it like this. It's a forehand. It's a forehand. So we'll keep it at that. I'll feed one, and then I'll step forward, and I'll feed two, which is a backhand. Then I'll feed three, which is a backhand to the to the ribs, then I'll step back, I'll feed four. Then I'll thrust five. So let's go over that just so everybody's on the same page and we'll start from there, ready? One, step forward two, steady three, step back four, steady five. Steady one, step forward two, steady three, step back four, four, five, all right. Can everybody see me? Hearing somebody saying they can't see me. Okay, cool. And continue. So one more time. One, two, three, four, five. No step. One, two, three, four, five. So we start off with that series, right? Now I'm going to introduce you to the blocking series that we use as a warm up. The first time that I meet you, we're on the floor, I'm gonna feed you. I'm not gonna block your stick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gauge your distance. So I'm gonna start off a little further than I, than I usually do with people that I'm comfortable with. So I'll feed you one, you block, you counter. When you counter, I'm gonna leave my left hand up just to check, just in case you come a little bit too intense, right? Just in case you're a little too excited, you had too many monster energies, so I'll make sure I don't get checked in the face. So my hand is up just in case you come close. I step, I step forward and I feed you a two. Same thing, I don't block, but I acknowledge your strike. So I'm not gonna feed you like this. One, two, three, four. If you notice, my left hand is by my pocket, handling some change or something like that. You wanna keep your left hand active even though you're not doing anything to block it necessarily at that moment. So you go one, acknowledge, two, Acknowledge. Three, acknowledge. Four, acknowledge. Five, acknowledge. So does everybody follow so far what I'm talking about? You got to use your imagination. Right now, how this would play out is I do this solo. I don't need a partner to do it, but I'm imagining somebody in front of me blocking and countering, blocking and countering. So when I feed one, they block and now they counter. So their fist is in my face right here. So I want to make sure if I go to the side, one, I'll lean back just a little bit just to acknowledge their strike. Again, I'm not making any contact on the block. Step four, two, I acknowledge that strike. Steady three, acknowledge the strike. Step back four, acknowledge the strike. I'll lean back my head a little bit, but I'm not going to go four, right? I don't need any exaggerated motions because that's taken away from my balance and that's gonna take away from your timing. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're at 220 and it's going by faster than I thought it was gonna go. Okay, so the first set is no block. So I just acknowledge the strikes, making sure I'm not getting strike, I'm not getting hit. The next movement, I feed one through 12 again, right? but now I'm gonna block with my stick. So I go one, block, two, 
block, three, block, four, block, five, block. Again, one, block with the stick, two, block with the stick, three, block with the stick, four, block with the stick, five, block with the stick. For blint walk, the way that we block is like this. Slow is like this. I can generate power with it by putting my body behind the block. And it's not really a can, it's a definite. So if somebody's coming off to take off your head, you wanna make sure you're putting gusto, a little bit of intensity, a little bit of, of, of aggression behind that block. So I come back and I really stomp on that, on that, on that defense because I don't want that stick to come back and hit me in the face. So first set, I just met you. I gauge your distance. I feed you, I don't touch you. 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 That's the first date. So after the first date, I get your distance. I know what your energy is like, right? I'm feeding you nice and slow. Everybody's nice and safe. Second date, now I'm gonna block you with my stick. One, two, Three, four, five. Third date, now I'm gonna block you with my hand. One, two, three, four, five. So notice when you're blocking with your hand that you allow them to get a little bit closer. So I started with no block, gauging their intentions. Second, I blocked them with the stick. So I'm keeping that that basically 90 degree with my stick in my forearm and I'm posting my, my elbow on my hip for a little bit of more, more, uh, more structure on my block. So one, first set, no block. Two, block with the stick. Three, block with the hand. Four, the fourth set is blocking with stick and hand. One, two, right? So one, two. One, two. So I'm just gonna do angle one because of time, just to show you. So how this would go is I would do one through 12, no block. One through 12, block with the stick. One through 12, block with the hand. One through 12, block with stick and hand. And that ends the set. After that, we've gone on four dates. I'm pretty comfortable with you. So then we can go into, we can go into groupings. But that's a good, that's a good way to analyze so I'll round it out from here. That's a good way for me to understand, okay, some people when they're when they when they receive, they come off with with a lot of like passion. Okay, and that's cool. It's just sometimes sometimes I want to I want to just chill and I just walked in, you know, I just I just walked into to World Camp. I'm kind of like, man, I'm not I didn't I didn't I'm not amped off a bunch of like monster energies right now. So, but I want to make sure I'm being safe because at the end of the day, we're practicing a martial art. At the end of the day, their job is to provide me a little bit of aggression. So I need to be able to react to that at any state that I'm any state that I'm in. So this serves as a very basic drill, but it allows me to, to gain perception. Because we all know the people that people like to stop right in front of your face when they return their strikes. There's people like to stop through you. There's people like to hit you a little bit, show you a little bit of love. And there's people there like a mile away and they're like, you know, there's no reason for me to block because you're never going to touch me. So that first set is for you to gauge how much do I need to be, how, how close do I need to be this person or how far do I need to be to, from this person? And how do I adjust my timing to get that? It's almost like the first round of a boxing match. At first, professional boxing matches, you're, they're watching, they're trying to gauge the range. They're trying to gauge their range. And after that, you can determine how you can apply your timing, how you can apply your techniques to dominate or to win the fight. So I really, I enjoy that and I enjoy starting with that. Sometimes I skip two or three sets. Maybe I won't go through the entire set, but it really depends on how I'm feeling with that person before I go into more advanced techniques. Cause we like to stress that when we, when you train with the safeties first, but on the other end of that sword, if you get hit, it's your fault. Right. We'll always take care of you, but you want to make sure that you're always protecting yourself at all times, because at the end of the day, we're doing a martial art. So 
Um, that's all I have for today. Man, it's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, so Guru Ty was talking about how, so just shout out to Guru June, Guru John Bailey, GM Shelly, GM Bobby, Coach Arnold, um, and everybody in the community. I've, I've met a lot, of, a lot of you people on the call today, a lot of you I haven't met, and it's really cool that we're able to interface through this, whereas, you know, otherwise we'd be having our own seminars and we wouldn't be able to, to address like this. So I appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for, for, the, for the time. That's great. Has anybody got any questions for Tom? I know you all enjoyed it. That was some great feedback. I hope you go back and read that, Tom. Yeah, I just want to throw something out, actually. Uh, Tom, remembering when you started out in, uh, in John's basement, man, I really like the martial artist you've become. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's... That's what I can say, man. That's, that's awesome. Nice job. Thank you, Guru. <laughs> I just went on three dates online. Yeah, I wasn't planning that. So, sometimes things come out, as, uh, as, as my training crew knows. Screw June knows, like, sometimes stuff that just comes out. It's a little, you caught in the moment. But we're all passionate about this. And uh, as um, Guru Ty was talking about, uh, I do teach on Mondays and Fridays and Saturdays, and we have Zoom sessions, so they're open to everyone. So reach out to me if you want to join. Um, our focus right now is on Balintz Walk. Rowell um, does does uh, throw in the That's weird. Somehow I can't hear. Is everybody else here, Tom? Can you guys hear me? I hear that voice. Oh, man. All right. So, so I think I was muted on. I teach on Mondays. I teach on Fridays. And I teach on Saturdays. So we have a Zoom session open for anybody that wants to join. So feel free to reach out to me. I'll send you the link. Um, Chris Ball has a comment. Any preference on the chambering? For me, my understanding is that when I'm chambered up here for Kombatan, I, I prefer this for longer ranges if I'm further away. If I'm close to you, it's easier for you to reach out and check my elbow. Whereas in Balintz Walk, you're not touching this. Like once I, once I do semi-advanced, you're not touching this without getting through, without getting through the, the feeler, right? Um, so, that, that's the only preferences I have. It, it just, Guru June's very big on giving credit to where credit is due. So when I'm doing Balintz Walk, I wanna make sure that I pay, pay, pay tribute to, to Jim Bobby. When I'm doing Komatan, I pay, pay tribute to uh, Grandmaster Ernesto and G, GM Shelley. And KI, same thing. KI is gonna be like this. Balintz Walk's gonna be like this. Komatan's gonna be like this, or it's gonna be a lower stance. So there's a time, so I like to give this analogy, I guess, to kind of close it out. Um, it's kind of like when you see people learning a, a certain type of dance, like whether it's hip hop, whether it's a swing, but there's a certain flavor. And if you truly master each art in itself, then you can find out the ways to, to properly blend it. But if you do it before then, it, it tends to look like shit. So it, it's like a hodgepodge of this, hodgepodge of that, and it's like, because you didn't fully learn, not to say every, every completely master in art, but there's a certain point where you can say, okay, I've reached a good fundamentals on here where now I can fluidly blend this in versus being like, I kind of did a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there, and now I can, I can call this MMA. And, and, that's, and you start to see the, the uh, differences when people do that. Good, good stuff. Excellent stuff, Tom. I'm so glad to see you out there teaching, and I love watching you, as a lot of people said, watching you move and, and the way you explicitly show stuff, because it matters, as you pointed out. I mean, that's a, that's a great point. So anyway, um, 
Yes, oh, Tom, so what, I don't know if you noticed, what I'm doing is every time someone finishes a session, I'm gathering a screenshot, I'm saying a few words, and that would be a great place to post the link of our things that you have for social media so that people can follow and also you know, know what's happening where and when. So please respond to that. I'll tag you in it. Uh, that way you, you and uh, Rose Groups can get the information out there. Um, anyway, yeah, we've got a lot of great people here. So thank you. And Tom, thanks again. Uh, as always, you support this event like no other. So I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, sir. No, that's cool. Um, I guess we get it's time to change. It's 2.30. Well, 2.31. I guess I'm, I'm running over. Sorry. Uh, thanks again, Tom.